We're going to have a cool and comfortable night on our hands across Kelo land with low temperatures falling into the low to mid 50s and a nice light breeze to go light up right along with us. So enjoy it if you have the chance to do so. Now, the fall preview basically ends tonight as we begin a gradual warm up tomorrow. Mid 80s and some low 80s to the east, upper 80s and a few low 90s out west. And the heat just builds upon itself as we head toward the weekend with one exception. We'll talk about that coming up. But until then, first at four starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. We look at how you can help people impacted by the deadly wildfire on the island of Maui as the death toll continues to rise. Plus, the Coyote Athletic Director is leaving his position. We'll look at the legacy David Herbster will leave behind. And later, there's another portion of I-90 where that speed limit could be lowered to 65 miles per hour. We'll tell you where it is straight ahead. Well, good afternoon, and thanks for turning into First at Four. I'm Tom Hansen. And I'm Kelly Volk. The death toll in Hawaii now stands at 96 as teams continue to search for survivors. Hundreds of families have been left devastated by the flames. Jeff Newen has the latest from Maui, Hawaii. As firefighters put out hot spots on the island of Maui, search and recovery teams are making their way through the devastation. They will find 10 to 20 people per day probably until they finish. It's hard to um, recognize anybody, but they're able to determine if someone did perish. Hawaii's governor has been on the ground in the historic town of Lahaina, which saw the most casualties. The quickness with which it happened was the craziest part. This resident walked for miles along a road covered in thick smoke to get to safety. We walked about four miles. We were past by over 20 vehicles. Others, like Cassandra Villasenor, jumped into the water to escape the flames. We had to go under the water to stay cool and, you know, breathe as calmly as we could. At one point, this church sheltered nearly 300 evacuees. Last night, the governor's office relocated about 80 displaced locals into hotels for at least a month. At the Western Maui in Ka'anapali, this worker is helping to feed hundreds of hotel workers and their family members. Here we got running water, now we got electricity, we got cell service now as of last night. Many residents have expressed frustration about having little warning before the flames swept in. I've lived here for 23 years. I've heard the siren go many times. or heartbroken that people couldn't get out or didn't get alerted. The governor says a comprehensive review is underway to determine why the state's siren system failed. Jeff Nguyen, CBS News, Maui, Hawaii. And the cause of the wildfires is under investigation. Officials estimate the recovery will cost more than $5 billion. Support is pouring in from across the country to help the people impacted by the deadly wildfires in Hawaii. The Red Cross has sent more than 200 trained disaster workers to the island to aid those displaced. However, they could still use more help. We're always looking for additional volunteers. We always need to remember that we, we deploy volunteers across the nation all the time. We need to make sure we get volunteers at home that can help out if something should happen here while everybody else is deployed. And you'll see the different ways the Red Cross is helping out people in Hawaii tonight on Kelloland News at 6. Now let's get a check on this evening's forecast with meteorologist Adam Rutt. A little windy out there, huh? Yeah, a little cooler, too. I'm fine with that personally. I, <laughs> I, I know there are a couple of other people. At least one person in this studio that might be a fan of that as well. Uh, oh. But we don't get to keep this for much longer. In fact, as we head into the middle of the week, yeah, we get a reminder that it's still 39 days until fall starts, but then again, who's counting? There's Watertown, 75 with a north wind of 17 miles per hour from Watertown to downtown where it's also quite nice here in Sioux Falls. 77 is the current temperature, also our high for the day so far. Uh, north wind at 16 miles per hour. That has been a very cool and comfortable breeze that we have been able to enjoy. We are still sitting in the 70s in many locations, including 79 in Rapid City, 73 for Spearfish, 76 Faith, 78 in Pier, but a little bit cooler East River, 76 for Huron, 77 also in Aberdeen, 72 Brookings, 67 though if you're in Worthington, 68 in Spencer, 75 now in Yankton. The other thing helping us out along with that northerly breeze, dew points have been mainly in the 50s and 40s, at most a 60 degree dew point. That's still pretty good uh, considering how hot and humid 
humid we can get in the middle of August. Satellite and radar is working. You can tell on the right hand side of your screen there's just a little sliver of cloud cover and a teeny bit of moisture that's trying to make its presence known. But beyond that, that has been just about it. It's high pressure is going to hold steady for the next couple of days. Low temperatures tonight are going to be very comfortable in the low to mid 50s with a nice light breeze to go with it. Highs tomorrow do rebound. We're in the low to mid 80s in southeastern Kelowland, either side of 80 toward Worthington and Spencer. Of those, we go up to the northeast, more the same in terms of low to mid 80s. Plenty of sunshine to go around and a light southwesterly breeze this time as opposed to the northerly wind that we've been able to enjoy today. Out west, the beginnings of what we're watching for the second half of the week. Upper 80s and low 90s. Again, plentiful amounts of sunshine. But we are going to get a pretty blunt reminder by the weekend that, no, we're not done with summer yet. We'll talk about how warm, if not all right hot, it will be. With, again, one exception coming up this week. All in your seven-day forecast as we head through the hour. Thanks, Adam. One person died and another was injured following a motorcycle crash Sunday afternoon near Rapid City. The Highway Patrol says the bike was driving along Neck Yoke Road when it went off the road. The motorcycle flew through the air. The 66-year-old passenger fell off while the driver stayed on. The passenger died while the driver received minor injuries. Authorities say neither person was wearing a helmet. A 69-year-old man drowned Friday night after falling in the water near Downs Marina in Pier. Police say the man was grabbing something from his boat and did not return to his vehicle. He was found in the water unresponsive. He died at the hospital. The man's name has not been released. Another person has been arrested in connection with federal and state law enforcement's sex trafficking operation during the Sturgis motorcycle rally. 35-year-old Burton Dave Chief Jr. of Rapid City is charged with attempted sexual exploitation of a minor. Court papers say Chief was contacting who he thought were 13- and 14-year-old girls for sex. Both were undercover agents. If convicted, Chief faces up to 30 years in federal prison. A Montana judge has sided with young environmental activists who say state agencies were violating their constitutional right to a clean and healthful environment. The judge found the policy the state uses in evaluating requests for fossil fuel permits is unconstitutional. This adds to a small number of legal decisions around the world that have established a government duty to protect citizens from climate change. A 13-year-old North Dakota boy survived a nearly 100-foot fall off a cliff at the Grand Canyon during a family trip. Authorities say it took emergency crews two hours to rescue Wyatt Kaufman after he slipped and fell last week. The teenager was flown to a Las Vegas hospital and treated for injuries, including nine broken vertebrae, a ruptured spleen, collapsed lung, and a concussion. He was discharged from the hospital Saturday and driven home to Castleton, North Dakota.